come to worship you. We come to praise you. We ask the Lord God Almighty you continue to be glorified as we proceed. Let no man take the glory. Jesus be highly exalted. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have praised, we have worshipped. Come on, put your hands together.
Open up your glad to be praising the Lord tonight. Yeah, yeah, this is the best place to be. The best place to be is to praise the Lord. The place where you are praising the Lord. We have the children who are also going to praise the Lord tonight. We need help to get this thing off the... Please. Help to get them out so that children can have space. Children said, why would we have a Why we have a praise night? And they will not praise the Lord. They want to praise the Lord. The Bible says, out of the mouth of babes, God has ordained praise. Put your hands together for the children of the As they talk to the praise of the Lord.
bless them. So stretch out your hand and bless them. The way you know how to bless them, just bless them. That nothing will hinder these children from growing. And they will express their graces to Jesus Christ. They will expand the kingdom of Jesus Christ. They will not live just by mere religion. Father, we thank you for giving us children. They are your heritage. We bless them. We release them to you. Even those that will be artists here, Almighty God, let them have freedom of expression. And in their freedom, grant them the anointing to be responsible. We bless you, bless your present life and your future life. We release the blood of Jesus Christ to speak on your behalf at all times. In Jesus' name and in his love, we have blessed our children. Amen. Amen. Clap for them once more. God bless you. We love you, children. Which Mary? Which Mary? You better hold the Mary. Which Mary? Take the Mary and just do justice. 
Christmas. Pega, 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 pega. Ha. Don't tell me that uh, you came here with that negative vibes that my husband went to do. I am angry. I am so, so angry with this country and everybody in this country. Why? Last year, I bought one bag of rice. This year, I couldn't even buy half. I bought one ticket. Friends. What can I say? And what can I do for a friend like you? 
just don't offend God by complaining. No matter who you I'm sorry for not appreciating you. <laughs> In fact, if not, you want to put me into trouble? No, I will cut you off. No, no, you cut me off.
Almighty God. We have come to say you deserve it. You are mighty. Incomparable God. There is no one like you. The creator. Not only of men, of everything. Even dominion, thrones, invisible and visible things. You made them in your mind. You didn't create them like men say they create things. You spoke them into being. And they came into being. You molded us and put your breath in us. And we became living beings. Made in your image are we. Thank you for extending love to us. Thank you for the power of your spirit that enables us to praise you. We are not responding to you because we get physical things from you. We are responding to you because you are our maker. It makes sense to respond to the maker. Nothing, no one, nobody made us except you, invisible God, Yahweh. God that does not have a name. God whose attributes are numerous. God that the more we know, the more we see what we don't know. The God that cannot fit in into curriculum of human study. Indescribable. We bless you. We exalt you. We lift you up above coronavirus. We lift you up above everything that is seeking attention. We lift you up above Nigeria, above the nations, above all. We bless you. We know you only when you reveal yourself. The God of revelation. The God that is mightier than how we describe him. The God that can blast from his nose and sees we part. You parted the Red Sea without touching it. You made things without touching them. The God that can raise the dead. The God that can make the living die. The God that death is as afraid of. Because you are alive. You came into existence before death came. So you raise people from the dead. You give them life, not earthly life, eternal life. We exalt you above our fears. We lift you up above all our financial problems. We command every reckless spirit, every power that has been assigned to distract us from you. We command them in the name of Jesus by the power of your presence. Omega. You begin, you end. What you have begun here, Lord God Almighty, you will complete it. For this reason, we celebrate you. Our children will live long. Our children will live in prosperity. Our children will excel in their destinies. We want you destiny twisters. Every power that has been assigned against us and our children. Celebration. We call you, we command you to join us in celebrating our mighty God. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. We lift you up. Give me the cup of victory, Lord God. Give me the cup of
right now, I address every heart here. Any heart that is lifting another God up, in Jesus' name, let that heart pay attention to Almighty God now in Jesus' name. We respond to God through the heart. We don't respond and thank God because he is like Santa Claus giving material gift. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Not because of material gift. It's an insult. It's an insult. God made the heart as a place of his parliament. The place where he governs people. All we need is respond from the heart. Christianity is a heart journey. It's not a physical response to materialism. Not physical. Mm, at all. Not physical. You, you may not even dance, but there is a chord striking in your heart that it is God we are praising. This is not man. This is God. Invisible God present. Emmanuel. We celebrate him. God with us. He is a God that we are celebrating. If you see this God as man, you worship man, it's idolatry. In the name of Jesus Christ, we lift him up here now once again. Can I hear amen? You know what happened? He's already up. Why are we lifting him up again? We are just saying that's your place. It comes back to us when we say the right thing to him. Because when we pray, when we praise, we call him who he is and we say what he has revealed. So it is our benefit to praise him. Because we have lifted him up, I decree and I prophesy, you will be joined here with him. Yeah. Above the powers that are assigned against you by Satan. Yeah. What did I say? Somebody said, I will match the devil. Not in your strength, though, because we cannot. I am telling you, the authority, the power is in our place. It does not matter what he's doing. It does not matter the sickness. It does not matter the people he's sending above to go to heaven and to go to anywhere. Our God is in control of the devil. And the devil, it must obey what God says. The devil is limited by the rule of our God. I say it again, Yoruba. Matesh Mole. In case you don't hear Yoruba, I match Satan. Somebody say, I match Satan. You know what you do to match Satan? You don't praise God. Immediately you start praising God, you are stepping on the devil's head. The devil hates praise. The devil trembles at the praise of our God. The devil cannot stand the name of Jesus Christ. He knows that he said, he knows that he anoints. I say it again, Matthew. Listen to me. You see the problem is causing right now that you don't have money. The problem is causing right now that is making you sick. The problem you are having right now that it looks like you are going to die, it is a lie. What did I say? It is a lie. Listen to me. In case you have a very poor definition of a lie, this is the definition of a lie. Something that is truly happened and is truly wrong. It is a lie that you are poor. What did I say? It is a lie that I am poor. Mm. The truth is defined by our God. Jesus did not say that he believes in lie. He said it is the truth. As long as it is written, and it is written in the word of God, and he incarnated in Jesus, it is the truth. Let me tell you what Jesus says about you. The love he has for you shall never fail and shall never end. Amen. Shall never end. That's the truth. And you know what that means? If you believe it, not everybody believes it. If you are one of the people who believes it, that the love of Jesus is unfailing and it can never, never end. Lift up your right hand like an activist and actively shout one hallelujah. Go, Cornerstoneites!
motion. We got twist. Ah, I I have a mandate to just pray or preach on why we celebrate. Why do we celebrate? Why do we celebrate life? Why do we celebrate Christmas? The simple reason. Because of the gift God gave to us. I didn't say gifts. When you mention gifts, that because of the gifts God gave to us, is idolatry. I know worshippers, in one sense, have many gods. And one of their gods is money. Which makes idol worshippers celebrate when they have money. We are not idol worshippers. The reason we are celebrating is because God is so kind to extend his grace to us as gift. And the grace of God is the finished work of Jesus that has laid the foundation for people to be God's children. If you are one, can I hear another hallelujah? Hallelujah! We celebrate because we don't belong again to parents. We don't belong again to countries and tribes and to things and gods. Jesus has given us grace. Meaning, the disgraceful ways that was in existence before Jesus came has been cancelled. That was what the devil was carrying around to condemn us. Say, God, Jehovah, Almighty, see your children. They are not like you. They are not holy as you are holy. They are sinning against you. He is the author of sin and the one who condemns when sin comes. So he uses that not knowing that God had a plan and that we are not after thoughts. We are his people and the plan he had is that he will come himself to pay the price of the sin Adam ushered us into. The inherited sin that even before we were born, we were sitting inside the womb. And the one that conceived us, father and mother, the father put the, the seed in the mother. The mother conceives it, you know, and then brings the child out to life. Father, mother, child or children at once, immediately they enter into this setting, they are sinners. Who will deliver us from this mess? That is the story that the devil was writing, not God was writing. The story of God is that we are made good. Hallelujah. But we threw the story away and went for bad news by sinning against God who made us. And inside that bad news, God had good news. That is the reason. Even now, inside your problem, God is there as a solution. And what happened? In the fullness of time, he entered into history, bringing fullness of grace and truth, different from the beginning. And anybody who now believes is called a born again Christian. Why born again? Born again because before we were all against this God. Whoever sins is against God. And there is nothing any human being can do, could do, will ever be able to be done to take care of the problem of sin. So sin was like Satan as arm robber putting God to come and pay ransom. And God said, I'm coming. And you know Satan does not take cash. He prints it to mess people up. That's why we call him the prince of this world. He has messed many people up. They rejoice when they have cash. Some even bear the name cash. 
There's one cash as a footballer. The guy they play nonsense. Call that cash. There are people on earth now. They think when they have money, that is when they can rejoice. The same people, they say when they have money, they can do all things. They speak terrible Elizabethan English. Money answered all things. Has money been able to cure coronavirus? Has money been able to give money to some people to have children? Of course, we see the limitation of money. But the God that we serve, who gives us the grace of Jesus Christ to be born again, is unlimited. This is why we celebrate. We celebrate because it is too late for the devil to disgrace us. We have victory over him. Amen. Say three times, I have victory over Satan. I have victory over Satan. By my faith. By my faith. I have victory over Satan. I have victory over Satan. By my faith. By my faith. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. I have victory. I have victory. Over Satan. Over Satan. It is the gift of God. I celebrate it. I celebrate it. Especially this season. Especially this season. Of, Christmas. of Christmas. I celebrate Jesus Christ. I celebrate Jesus Christ. He is my life. He is my life. Not just the, Not the giver of grace. The controller of my breath. The of my breath. And the owner of everything that concerns me. And the of everything that concerns me. It makes sense for me to worship him. To praise, him to praise him and to lift him up, to lift him up in, exaltation, in exaltation above my circumstances, above my circumstances. he reigns one amen. amen number two amen, amen. the second amen. amen then say again I am going to have the best Christmas with or without money because Jesus will never leave me. He will never forsake me. For this reason, I have confidence and I rejoice as I celebrate him. Even when it is time to die, I go and meet him where he is and I will see him as he is and I look forward. So whether I live or I die, I already have victory over Satan. In Jesus' name. Amen to the Father. Amen to the Son of God. Amen in the Holy Ghost. Please, mark what you are saying now because what brings victory is I will not love myself even unto death because I have been bought. I have been bought. Whoever is afraid of death, this Christmas you are delivered from it. Because you are going to live as long as God says you will live. I know one brother, late brother in the Bible, Brother Lazarus. Brother Lazarus died. And he was a friend of Jesus. Jesus used to come and rest in their, in their home. In their home. Had two sisters, Mary and Martha. And they told Jesus, Lazarus was dead. And Jesus said, to cut it short, that he was sleeping. And some of you with very terrible encyclopedia and dictionary, you will be laughing at what Jesus said. You don't know Jesus defined life and not, as, not dictionary, not your professors, not even your brain. 
Your intelligence cannot define life because you didn't make it. Why did he say he was sleeping? Because death is like sleep. You know my prayer? Father, grant me the privilege of dying in my sleep. I will like it if God will grant it to I am not in control. <laughs> Some people pray for things that don't matter. The greatest enemy that we all fear is death. Yeah. And it has already been conquered by this Jesus. Yeah. That's why Jesus said he was sleeping. Because Jesus knew he had not called Lazarus. And death will call Lazarus. The devil is the destiny twister and destiny killer. Yeah. It wasn't the destiny and time for Lazarus to go. So Jesus said, let's go there. Hey boys, let's go. Your disciples followed him. When they got there, it was already four days, three to four days, yeah. he was there. Mm -hmm. And they were laughing. Aha. By this time, we will be smelling. It doesn't matter whether your case is smelling. Yeah. What matters is who is handling it. Yeah. I don't know who is handling some people's cases. Yeah. My own now, oh God, Jesus Christ. Jesus, now big man. We don't know what I'm calling us, who more Jesus, now big man. Now you insult. Jesus, now God. He called Lazarus from the grave. Then the sister said, if you have come earlier, maybe you would have helped the matter. Jesus is never late. Back to yourself and hear Jesus is never late in any matter. Jesus is never late in any matter. How can you call on God? You say he delay. It doesn't delay, it doesn't deny. He called Lazarus again. Ha. Some people start laughing. Maybe this guy needs rest. He's been working, he's been healing people. And then the third time to confirm it that he is a God that will rule over Lazarus' life. Come forth! After the dead Lazarus, come forth! Some people say that he gave for a ring of foot. He gave a command for Lazarus to come back. Why? Because the power of his grace works in the resurrection even before he died. To prove his God. He already knew he was going to lay his life down. The one who laid his life down for sins to be forgiven is the controller of life. Amen. Jesus the Christ is the gift of God. Is the one we celebrate. Don't eat turkey, rice, chicken and forget who we are celebrating. Lazarus responded. He came back to life. Shame to those who thought they had killed him. He didn't tell us what killed him. But remember, the devil has people who are servants to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Every of such people who want to use coronavirus against you in the name of Jesus Christ Coronavirus has stayed with them. Amen. Even if it comes to you, Jesus will knock it out. It will not take your life until it is time. Amen. What about the people whose life have been taken? Are you a people or a person? Did those people make you? What about those who will not contact it and those who will contact it and be saved from it? I'm one of the people who contacted it and I'm saved. Why do you choose to believe the testimony of those who didn't make it? Why are you blind to the testimony of those Jesus has shown in our faith? In Jesus' name, by the power of his gift and his grace of life, you have made it and you will make it in victory in every sphere of your life. Amen. As Lazarus came back, everything buried about you, everything that is not making progress about you, this Christmas, I kick them right now to start making progress in Jesus' name. Amen.
It's your choice, so because Jesus is served by belief or unbelief. But we see the Lord of both believers and unbelievers. I have just chosen to let you know that the reason we celebrate and the reason we rejoice is because we already have the gift of Jesus. It is too late for the devil to make us fail. It's too late. Let me tell you one of the ways of knowing a false prophet. Note it. One clear way. If anybody tells you he can heal somebody and raise the dead, it's a false prophet. Only God can do it. There was somebody who said, why are people dying? Because they are called home. After he said it, his wife died. Why didn't he stop it? That is the case of a man without Jesus. He wants to compete. There is no power I have. I have never said so. I will never say so. I am not stupid. My doctrine is based on Jesus Christ. All powers belong to Jesus Christ. If you are disconnected, you are a false human being, a false prophet, a false Christian, you are a falsehood. Only Jesus can heal you. Be careful of people who promote themselves and call themselves powerful. No person has the power to heal any person except Jesus heals. They were going to beat a native doctor for not performing what he promised he would do. The native doctor told, not even church now, native doctor, native doctor in an idolatry system. He said they shouldn't beat him. That it was Jesus that did not permit what he said to take place. They know they beat native doctor when in divination no work. Because Jesus is not just controlling church, he's controlling all shrines. He gives permission to demon to walk or not walk. And in his name, because you are here to praise him and to celebrate his birthday, any native doctor they take your name to, anywhere they do all kinds of charms and they think that they will succeed. Even if they wish it, they didn't go to native doctor because there are witches and wizards that don't need native doctor. They even have power more than native, native doctor by their evil wishes. Anybody that wishes you evil in the name of Jesus Christ, it will not be allowed to alight on you. Yeah. That is sound teaching. Why shouldn't we celebrate this life? If you don't celebrate it, you don't believe it. I repeat, this is going to be your best Christmas. That is the reason. Jesus made sure he removed us from all the false confidences we put our lives. Money and friends. A friend told me, he said he has lost five of his friends in one week. And I read another one in the paper. He said he has lost five of his friends in one week. This one is in government. We shall have no fear. We shall not panic. Why? Jesus Christ is in control. He is the gift of life. That's why we celebrate his life. We are not celebrating his things. We are the crown of his life. He loves us in a way that he can't fail. Somebody, you have not been married for a long time. This Christmas season, you will see your spouse. Yeah. Believers scream like that. Unbelievers keep quiet because they don't believe. You see this season is a time of planting for 2021. 2021 is going to be a time of huge harvest. There shall be recovery of everything that brought you to tears. Everything that was stolen from you shall be recovered. There shall be hope beyond what you expect next year because you allow Jesus to discipline you this year. Huge harvest for you. Harvest of righteousness for you in Jesus' name. 
We don't celebrate at the time we see the harvest. We celebrate before the harvest because the person who planted the seed is surely, certainly going to bring the harvest. No weather can kill any of his plants. We are planted to grow well. To develop well. And it shall go well with you. If you are celebrating your hard work, I will not celebrate it with you. That is what fools do. They celebrate the works of their hands. Why? Because they don't understand that the works of their hands don't count. What counts is the Son of God, who is the owner of the life. He's with you. Celebrate him. Whether you have somebody in the hospital or somebody not in the hospital, it is his grace that kept that person in the hospital. When you celebrate him, you pray. He answers. Celebrate him. You don't have to take alcohol to celebrate Jesus. You don't have to smoke anything. You just need to let the spirit of Jesus take you over to what he has done. If you think well and you don't shed tears of joy, you didn't think right. You didn't think right. If I die this moment, no controversy, no regret. At 61, going to be 62 next year, I don't stay here. I don't know about you that wants to be Methuselah. I don't know. I don't want to be Methuselah. I don't want to die young. I want to die when Jesus calls me home. And then it becomes a passage. The greatest enemy, death. I will match up. And I will say, where is that power? But listen. It comes with fear. Because even the Son of God asks for excuse not to die. Nobody dies and smiles except a mental patient. What does that say? Even what makes us cry, good will still come out of it. Amen. What makes us fear, God will still prove it as good. Amen. Trust Him to celebrate Him. Don't be celebrating one another without Him. It's a sin. That's the reason. I don't go to worldly parties. They don't celebrate Jesus there. They celebrate funeral. If you go to the bank to loan money that somebody died, they will give it to you. But if you go to the bank that you want to develop something, they don't give you. Why? The bank belongs to the world. Jesus does not have any bank. He deals with souls. If you are banking souls for Jesus, celebrate him. You are too much more than any president of the world. No cry this Christmas that there is no money, no food. Thank God for that drama. Let's learn. Whoever is complaining this period is a spiritual dead person. Does not know how to think. You are complaining at old age that they sack you from work. Why are you not happy they didn't take you away from life? Why are you not happy? Anybody can be sacked from work. Are you not tired of the work that they are paying you money that is not enough for you want? And listen to me. They sack you because Jesus wants to give you another. He's always working for our good. Always. I've seen enough of him to understand that a man does not have victory by hard work. Neither can we succeed by the law. So the government making law are making laws for the earth, for the land. The kingdom of Jesus is from heaven. We are the children of the kingdom. His kingdom is diametrically opposed to the kingdom of this world. But he controls it. And because you belong to Jesus, you will control wealth and good things. Amen. They will not control you. Amen. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. So a seed, give right now, if you believe. And if you don't, please don't worry. Whether online or no online, you are not paying for the message you have heard. You are telling Jesus that I will keep sowing in season out of season. You know what you have done here to come and listen to sowing? It's not money you sow first. You sow your time. You have listened to Jesus in time and you will do well in his time. Amen. Opportunities are going to come to you and you will not miss it. Amen. If you have sown time and then you are not sowing money, in Jesus' name, you will control money, money will not control you. Amen. You are saying, Jesus, I support your kingdom. It's a kingdom of joy. I'm a recipient of joy. And I give this. Collect it. I pray on those seeds. Father, those responding to you, bless them. Collect them, collect them. They look like this guy. <laughs> collect it. We are soldiers on the cross. No time for a year. Take mine. A pastor who does not give is a thief. It's a thief because he thinks the money is coming to him. He goes to Jesus. Even if the money will come to you for disbursement, for church needs, you must respect the command that you have given and so first. If I don't give in this church, I'm a charlatan. If I don't give, I tell others to give, I'm a false teacher. Because I believe, I must head the giving. I must head the people who, who hear and who do what God says. That's how to succeed. Church, wake up. Don't panic. Nothing is wrong with you. All shall go well with you. Yeah. Whether you are alive or you die, fear not. Don't let people deceive you. They can help you. They just want to read from where they are not so. Be careful of such people. Rejoice. Jesus is alive. He has given us quality life. You know what quality life is? Quality life is eternal life. And it's a spiritual life. Now, anytime you, are, you hear of spiritual life, understand that it's about hope, it's about faith, it's about love. Do you know what it means for Jesus, say, for Jesus to tell you that let your hope be in me because I have overcome, you will also overcome. Do you know what that means? It's not by your power or your battle you are fighting. Jesus has already fought for you. Right now, the battles that are coming your way, you have won them before coming. So I'm a winner before any problem even comes. That is how good this Christian faith is. Just believe it. This is not logic. It's subjective reasoning. You believe God, it makes sense. It doesn't have to make sense to believe. And education has killed many people. If somebody here, you find it difficult because of your education, in Jesus' name, may he be genuinely born again. Yeah. The moment you are genuinely born again, you start thinking differently. You start thinking Christ, not crisis. You start thinking, not science. Jesus Christ. And life becomes simple. Those of you that will travel, whether tomorrow, anytime, in Jesus' name, there shall be journey messages for you. Yeah. What is the advice of government? Which I agree. Don't travel. Don't be stupid. Stay safe where you are. God sent government to tell you. The same reason we are not going to have vigil. On New Year's Day, come here, you will be blessed for the New Year. Yeah. The New Year is just Alpha. And is that not the name of Jesus? Yeah. Come and start receive blessing. Go home, celebrate the New Year. You will do well in the New Year coming. Yeah. This is praise night. Who are we praising? Not ourselves. Jesus Christ. On Friday, Christmas Day, Come and now say it's your birthday. I want to praise you more for coming to my life. 
All heads bowed. If there is somebody here, you just they hear Jesus. You don't have personal relationship with him. You will live in fear, not in faith. You are always scared of dying. You are always thinking negative. You are always thinking something is about to happen that is not good. I want to pray for you. Can you lift up your hands wherever you are? Good. God bless you. God bless you. Not that you don't go to church. You go to church, but you, you don't have that reassurance that if anything happens to you, you will be in the hand of Jesus. Your hands. You are just ridiculous. God bless you. Father, these people raise up their hands. You know them. Give them genuine life of people who have encountered your truth and your life. People controlled by your spirit. Touch their spirit and help them to submit their spirit to your spirit. So that they know how to live by the spirit. For to be born again is to be led by the spirit. Let no gods of the land lead these ones again. And let fear depart from them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please, those of you who lift up, who signify, the evangelists are the people around you. Please, they will tell you what to do. They will tell you what to do. Okay, I close. Uh, good news. That's good news. That's our visitor. All right, you told me she was coming. Is that her? Okay. We bless you, my sister. She was here. She was here. Are you from America? You are from America. In the name of Jesus Christ, the purpose of coming to Nigeria to, to receive the power of Jesus Christ, that even when you go back to America, you'll be a new person. Yeah. May it take place. Yeah. For God to bring you to this kind of church and you came back again, God wants to do something. May you hear it and may you do it. Yeah. May God bless you and clean you up and present you as one of his loved ones. Yeah. In Jesus' name I bless you. Amen. Amen. Let's clap for Jesus Christ.